Hello, I'm Sara, and I'm joined today by my colleague Yasin. We're excited to be here, and thank you for being with us. We appreciate the time you have invested in talking to us, sharing your experiences, and providing us with feedback. Over the next 20 minutes, we will provide an overview of the privacy changes we introduced in Android 12, share best practices on how you can make your apps private by design, and provide a look at a few concepts we're considering for future release of Android. Users care deeply about privacy. They consistently tell us that they want an OS that protects their privacy and treats their data with care. And it's no surprise. As more of our day-to-day -day core functionalities move to the mobile device, people will naturally seek out devices that will keep them and their data safe. And from day one on Android, we have designed privacy for everyone. Particularly over the last several releases, we've made significant strides in keeping users' information safe. We've done this by relentlessly focusing on three core principles. First, by adding transparency around what data is accessed by apps and when. Second, providing simple controls for users so they can make informed choices about enhancing or limiting apps' access to their data. And third, focusing on data minimization to reduce the scope of permissions so users are not surprised by the data that leaves their device. As the Android platform evolves, it continues to provide tools and guidance to help developers integrate privacy-friendly features into their apps. For the remainder of this presentation, Yasin and I will provide best practices on how to confidently provide more transparency by making sure your users aren't surprised that you've accessed their data, how to provide controls while respecting users' choice, and how to reduce access to data by minimizing use of permissions. So let's start with the first best practice, paying attention to data accesses. As Android adds more and more transparency to the OS, it is increasingly more important for developers to pay attention to their data accesses. In Android 12, we're adding transparency to microphone and camera accesses. Going forward, users will know in real time every time an app accesses their mic or camera. By simply swiping down in quick settings, users can click on the indicators to view the apps accessing their data. If the access is unwarranted, users can quickly navigate to the app permission page to revoke the permissions. You should review your code of microphone and camera and proactively remove unexpected accesses. For example, Make sure your app is not accessing these sensors before the user has clicked on the feature that needs access. Users often tell us that they want to understand what data apps are actually using. With the new privacy dashboard, users will have a simple and clear timeline view of the last 24-hour accesses by mic, camera, and location. For the remaining runtime permissions, users will see whether or not an app accessed the data in the last 24 hours. We encourage all of you to review your code path and make sure all accesses can be justified by your use cases, including third-party SDKs, which will be attributed to your app. Users care deeply about why apps access their data. The Play Store will include a data safety section to provide users with easy to understand information about app data usage, allowing them to make more informed decisions about which apps they want to install. Users can feel safer and more confident that developers will use their data responsibly. Please make sure you check out our ADS talk, Get Prepared for Data Safety section to learn more. We know how sensitive content copy to clipboard data can be. Users frequently copy emails, addresses, and passwords. Android 12 notifies users every time an app reads from their clipboard data. Users will see a toast at the bottom of the screen each time an app calls get primary clip. The toast doesn't show if clipboard data originates from the same app. You can minimize access by first checking Get Primary Clip Description to learn about the type of data that is in the clipboard. The recommended best practice is to only access the clipboard when the user understands why. Now, to prepare for the new transparency features on Android, we recommend developers to first do an audit of their code for unexpected accesses. 
You can use the auditing APIs to untangle the mapping of your code by tracking which part of your code is accessing private data and track and control data, data access by third-party SDKs. The API instructs the system to invoke an app-specified callback each time the app accesses sensitive data. The callback provides information about the type of data being accessed and lets you record the stack traces and timing of the access. You can also provide a rationale for users to help them understand why your app accesses location, camera, and microphone information. The rationale can appear on the privacy dashboard UI, your app's permission screen, or both. In order to implement, you first need to add an activity that when started provides some rationale for why your app accesses the data. Within this activity, set the Android permission attribute to start view permission usage. If your app targets Android 12 or higher, you must explicitly define a value for the Android exported attribute. Then add the intent filter to the activity. You can add Android intent action view permission usage for your app's permission page and or you can add Android intent action view permission usage for period for the privacy dashboard. Depending on which intent filter you add, users will see an information icon next to your app's name. For further information about data access auditing APIs and permissions intent, please reference a recent blog published titled Increasing User Transparency with Privacy Dashboard. OK, so a few takeaways for developer when it comes to permission accesses. First, make sure your app is only accessing data when a feature needs it. Second, pay attention to permissions added by libraries in your merge manifest. For example, you could merge manifests to see what permissions are used by what library dependencies. Please refer to our blog post titled, Getting to Know the Behaviors of Your SDK Dependencies. And third, make sure you're not excessively accessing users' data. Moving to our second best practice is to respect the user's choice. Android offers users control that provides means for them to make informed decisions about who can access their private data and how much access they're willing to share. It's about balancing choice with safe defaults. It's important that you provide the user's choice and respect their decision. Our research shows that the more informed users are about why apps need access to their data, the more likely they are to engage. For example, one recent study showed users are less likely to deny permissions when requests include a rationale. It is critical that you explain to users why you need access to their data. In Android 12, we've added additional controls for location. Next time an app needs location, users will have a clear choice to reduce the accuracy provided to the app by selecting an approximate location. We encourage all developers that need location to review your use case and only request access course location if your feature doesn't need the user's precise location. It's important that you explain to users why your feature needs access to location and progressively request fine. Always be prepared for the users to only grant you course. Your app should still work. Here's an example of an app that has two features, one that needs access to course location only, and another that needs access to find location. If a user taps on a feature that needs course, check to see if you should present a rationale by calling should show request permissions rationale API. If the API returns true, then present the user with the rationale followed by approximate location permission dialog by requesting access course location. If later the user clicks on a feature that needs fine, then you can present the user with an upgrade dialog by requesting access fine location. As always, make sure users understand your location use case before requesting access. In Android 12, we're adding two new controls, which allows users to quickly cut off all access to microphone and camera on the device. In case users launch an app that needs access to the sensors, they will be notified to quickly turn the sensors back on. This is not the same as permissions being denied. The system will take care of the end-to-end -end flow and will let users know if toggles are muted. Apps don't need to do anything differently. 
And as part of this launch, we're also limiting motion sensor sampling rates to 200 hertz. Users also tell us that they're overwhelmed by the number of notifications they get. They want to have more control over which apps get to communicate with them. In the future release of Android, we're adding a new notification permission. This permission will work like all other permissions, and it will require the user to grant the app access before an app can send user notifications. If your app needs to send users notifications, going forward, please declare post notifications in your manifest. You can check access to notifications using the existing notification manager or notifications enabled method. Please note that this is consistent with how you request all other permissions on Android. So takeaways for developers. Number one, please make sure users understand why your app needs access to their data. Second, always be prepared for the user or the system to deny permissions, and respect users' choice when they deny the permission the second time. Third, don't ask for all permissions at once. Gradually request based on the feature a user has invoked. And finally, gracefully degrade when the user denies or revo revokes a permission. I'll now hand it over to Yasin to tell you more about best practices for minimizing use of permissions. Thanks, Sarah. Being respectful of the user's choice in terms of permissions is always a recommendation for good user experience. And Android offers alternative APIs to access sensitive information with less friction and better privacy control by the user. Here's a highlight of the main ones. One way you can minimize data access in Android 12 is by adding a new runtime permission for nearby connection. Up until now, companion apps for devices such as watches and headphones required the location permission to scan for nearby Bluetooth devices. We heard from users and developers that this was confusing, and not to mention overgranting location when apps just wanted Bluetooth. Going forward, companion apps can connect to their associated devices by requesting the new nearby permission. Up until API level 30, your app had to request the Bluetooth admin permission to discover and pair Bluetooth devices, along with the Bluetooth permission to connect with paired devices and the location permission. When targeting API 31, you can set a max SDK to API 30 to these existing permissions in your manifest. And add the Bluetooth scan permission with the user's permission flag never for location, which tells the system that your app won't be using it to infer the device location. You'll also need to add the Bluetooth Connect permission to interact with Bluetooth devices. And finally, add the Bluetooth Advertise permission if you need to make the user's device visible to other Bluetooth devices. Last year, we launched permissions auto-reset on Android 11 and made it available to Android 6 and up devices via Google Play services. If an app isn't used for an extended period of time, Android automatically revokes permissions for the app. Since the launch, permissions have been reset from 8.5 million apps. Make sure you're always checking permissions, as the system can reset your permission grants when your app isn't used in a few months. This year, we're building on permissions auto-reset by intelligently hibernating apps that have gone unused for an extended period of time, optimizing for device storage, performance, and safety. The system not only revokes permissions granted previously by the user, but it also force stops the app and reclaims memory, storage, and other temporary resources. In this state, the system also prevents apps from running jobs in the background or receiving push notifications. Users can bring apps out of hibernation by simply launching them. Similar to permissions auto-reset, the user will be prompted when an app has gone into hibernation and can disable hibernation in settings. On the storage side, we've introduced Scope Storage on Android 10, which initiated a privacy-preserving storage approach. With improvements on the following versions, apps' external directories aren't accessible to other apps, and you can add and edit your own files without requesting any permission, while editing third-party files require explicit user consent. So if your app only adds files to shared storage, you do not need to request any runtime permissions. 
in the upcoming months, we'll release a new feature called Photo Picker, which allows you to read images and videos selected by the user without requesting any permission. Selectable media includes the photos and videos stored on the device, but also from cloud providers like Google Photos. By using this feature instead of custom-made photo picker, you can stop requesting any runtime permissions to access all photos and videos. The photo picker will be available on Android 11 Plus devices through a Google Play system update. To invoke the photo picker, you'll need to launch the Action Pick Images intent and specify both the max number of selectable media and allow types, whether photos and or videos. Once the user has selected files, you'll get back their URIs through the clip data property and can read them via the content resolver. We will release a support library as well to abstract the media selection by using the photo picker when available and the storage access framework as a fallback on older devices, file content reading and metadata fetching easier for developers. We're also working on bringing more clarity for users and granularity for developers with new storage permissions. On the next version of Android, the new permissions Read Images will allow you to read all images and videos on the shared storage, while Read Audio will allow you to read all audio files, including playlist files like .m3u. Thanks to Scope Storage, adding and editing your own files, whether they are media files or not, does not require any permission. Non-media files in the shared storage are still accessible through the storage access framework. To apply these changes in your manifest, set a max SDK to API 31 on the read external storage permission and add the new permissions based on your app's features. Managed external storage can be used for apps that have a core use case requiring a broad access to files on a device. Keep in mind that this permission is subject to the All Files Access policy on Google Play. To sum up these recommendations, request as little as possible location access and always prefer course than find permission. Use the new Bluetooth permissions as they don't require the location permission if you don't need to derive physical location. And prepare your app for the photo picker, which avoids requesting any storage permissions by instead allowing users to choose specific images to share with your app. Thank you for watching this talk. And feel free to ping us on Twitter to share your feedback. Bye.